I think that probably I collect things I wish I'd made, you know? I started collecting in the 50s, so uh, for a lot of people who were going to the beach, going to the tennis, and uh, going to the mountain skiing, I was a gallery bum. By being around the art galleries and by uh, taking photographs and so on, I became friendly with the artist. This is Andy Warhol pictures that I took. Andy Warhol had his first show out here in, in Los Angeles, and I bought his first soup can painting for uh, $75. So my idea of collecting is not going and buying bankable names, but, but buying people that I believe really are contributing something to my artistic life. I mean, this is a Julian Schnabel, and this is obviously an abstract painting but it's an abstract painting that, that has words in it. This painting's exciting to me. I, I mean, every day I look at this and every day I'm, I'm rejuvenated because I love the, the movement and the, and the energy and, and, and the, you know. I mean, as an actor, I read a book called Six Lessons in Acting by Richard Boleslawski. And in it, he says, have you read the great literature? Have you, have you seen the great paintings? Do you know the great sculptures? Uh, uh, do you know the music of your day? Because to be an actor, you must know all about art. So I went off to find paintings, you know, so that I, I thought it would enhance my, my life as an actor. This portrait Julian Schnabel did of me, uh, Julian's a really dear friend. Uh, he made a movie called Basquiat, uh, Julian's first film about the artist, uh, Jean-Michel Basquiat. Uh, so I did Basquiat, and this is sort of a payment for Basquiat. He did this of me about six months ago. I stood for about four hours, and Julian danced and carried on and painted, and it was really wonderful. I really think it's terrific. I've always been proud of my selections, but I think of them in, in historical context. Who did it first is always important to me. It seems like the battle in the 20th century was how you get the street into the galleries, and then later it became uh, the graffiti artist. Jean-Michel Basquiat, for example, and Kenny Scharf, and uh, Keith Haring, who actually went out in the street and did spraying, and by doing that street art, finally got a museum. I knew uh, Keith Haring really well. I know Kenny Scharf really well. He's the only one, unfortunately, that's still alive, or fortunately for him, is still alive, but unfortunately for us, the others are dead. Uh, Jean-Michel Basquiat, I never met at all, but I bought this three months before, before he died, and I bought it for $17,000, and two months after he was dead, I was offered a million dollars for it. So, you know, uh, it's amazing how those things happen. This is a Keith Herring. I asked him, I said, what does this mean? He says, oh, it doesn't mean anything. I just draw and I, it does, I don't know what it is. But he knew at that time that he had AIDS. And if you look at the subject matter, it's like the black sperm with the king thing on it. It's fairly obvious that that's what that drawing is about. I don't care what the artist's intention is. I don't care about his intention at all. I mean, I either get it or I don't. Generally, I get it. At best, what you can do with uh, collecting is you make sure that you take care of the pieces because uh, you're really just a custodian of them. And uh, hopefully, they will live on beyond uh, your lifetime and that uh, you're just keeping them for the enjoyment of others. And hopefully, they'll all end up in museums. Uh,